The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorrento. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone, and welcome back to The Songwriter Show. I'm your host, Sorrentos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are very important to me, and that's why I'm so thrilled to host this show for you. I truly believe that every song is a story. The Songwriter Show is broadcast live on number one ranked W4CY Radio with listeners in all 206 countries in the world and every state in the United States. The station is also licensed with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and SoundExchange with partnerships throughout the music industry, including iHeartRadio, with exposure to over 300 million listeners. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the Songwriter Show, Eve. Thank you very much for having me, Sorrentos. Eve is known for his catchy and edgy contribution to indie folk music coupled with raw storytelling. Eve's in the Talent offers a new single entitled Montreal. Drawing some influences from Leonard Cohen and Arcade Fire, the nostalgic piece sees the now Calgary-based frontman, Eves, pay homage to his beloved hometown, Montreal, after departing in the city for many, many years. That's a really cool story you got there, Eve. No, for sure. And uh, actually, I was just in Montreal uh, three days ago, and uh, it's a strange coincidence that we're talking about this song now, because certainly every time you go back to your native town, there's some... Uh, stories and emotions that uh, resurface. Yeah, absolutely. When uh, when was the last time you were there? I was just there last week, but I usually go about every uh, year or so. But uh, I left Montreal uh, when I was 21, about uh, 20 years ago. Okay, I can tell you, I've been to Montreal about maybe five, six years ago, and I absolutely fell in love with the place. It's wonderful. Oh, and, and, and that's absolutely what this song is about is, um, you know, when you're born in a certain place and you live there all your youth and, or all your life, uh, sometimes it has to, you have to leave or you need a little bit of detachment to uh, understand really what a city has to offer and how different it is. And certainly um, the more time I spent, more years I spent away from Montreal, the more I started falling in love with it again and i think this love continues to uh grows so uh it's a never-ending love story i guess yeah tell me a little bit about the song did you write it in montreal no i wrote it in calgary and um the the song was written about uh, two and a half years ago um it started with a simple poem and then uh the poem led to a full-edged uh song and uh, actually, as of a few weeks ago, I added a French verse to it, which uh, makes it even more interesting for me, because I'm sure, as you can tell by my accent, I'm um, French-Canadian. So that makes the song bilingual, which um, I guess represents the city even uh, a step further. Yeah, I totally remember that about Montreal. Everyone's speaking either French or English, and it was, it was wonderful. Yes, you never know what you're going to get when you stop someone on the street. It's uh, it's like the lottery. So tell me why people are so nice in Montreal or in Canada in general. <laughs> Is it something uh, in the water or what? Uh, There must be something in the water, but I think also what makes Canada unique is I think there's a lot more differences from one province to another. Um, I mean, in the States, it's the same. If you're on the East Coast and the West Coast, obviously, there's a lot of differences. But I think um, even though most people tend to see Canada as, you know, one big country, um, um, if you've been to other provinces in Canada, I'm sure you can tell that Montreal, it's its own thing. Vancouver, it's its own thing. Toronto, it's its own thing. Certainly, if you go into Maritimes, it feels like completely a different world. So I think is the diversity is what makes it very um, 
very um, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. What's your main instrument, Eve? My main instrument is uh, guitar. I've dabbled a little bit with other instruments like piano, but uh, the more this project became, uh, the more this project uh, started to become a little bit more serious, I decided to, um, you know, dedicate myself, my focus to uh, the guitar only, uh, even though my main focus is and probably always will be uh, the writing part. Um, I was not even planning to be the singer when this project started. Um, really, my interest has always been the uh, songwriting, but uh, organically, things develop in such a way that I started singing my own song, and uh, acoustic guitar has always been my main uh, instrument. There's nothing better than to sing in your own song, even though a lot of people write songs for other people to sing. It, it's just a very gratifying feeling. Yeah, and I think the thing can be said the other way around, too, when you sing your own song for uh, a few years, and whether you grow tired of it or whether you start to doubt if that song, you know, is good or not. And then when you hear somebody else completely give it a different spin, uh, I also find that very um, fascinating. Um, I'm certainly not at the point in my career where people are requesting my song, but I had a chance <laughs> to, I had the opportunity to hear, you know, uh, whether it's open mic or other occasion to have people uh, do part of my song or even do them with me. And it's, it's just fun to see where they can, where they can take it. It's absolutely, you, you, you write a song and you hear something in your head and then you give the same lyric to somebody else and uh, it can be uh, night and day. And that I find always fascinating. And that's why I like to collaborate with different, different uh, musicians, different, um, you know, different styles, different, um, different influences, because I'm always looking forward to what each person's going to bring uh, to the ensemble. Who would you say has been your biggest influence on your music? I think, like you said at the beginning, Leonard Cohen artistically, to, for me, remained in a class apart. Um, I'm not even sure if influence is a strong, is a term that is, that defines really what it means for me, uh, not, not only in terms of writing, but in terms of melody, in terms of performance, in terms of who he is as a person, as a novelist, uh, spiritually. Really, it, it's been more of a sort of a mentorship for me since I've been 14 years old. I developed a little bit of an obsession with um, Leonard Cohen. Um, you know, and when you're a teenager, these these, I guess the obsession might be the right term. Maybe as I grew older, it became of a more healthy um, relationship as far as influence. And that always remained my main influence. Uh, but obviously, I would never dare doing, drawing some comparison. But as far as inspiration and looking at the holy grail of writing that you feel that you will never attain, um, you probably, that's probably never uh, going to change. Well, he's a wonderful source of inspiration I have. Tell me a little bit about when you create your melody. Is it just you hum it, you use your guitar? How do you come up with a melody for your song? Um, typically with me, it starts with a feeling. It starts with either um, I know it's going to be a slow song or something a bit more poppy or something a bit more you know, um, rhythmic. And once I'm in that mood and once I'm in that space, I think I just fiddle around, you know, maybe for half an hour, half an hour, looking for some chord progression that will match the mood or the feeling that I'm trying to express. Sure. And usually, usually the lyrics come second and the melody come third. So usually it's, it's I got a gist of what the song's going to be, you know, there's some chords in place, some certain progression. And typically once I have the lyrics in place, I start adding some, uh, different melodies on top, or sometimes I just leave it as is, um, as it was written on day one. Got it. What's the coolest place you've ever written a song? The coolest place? Uh, that's a good question, but because I have a chance to travel uh, for my uh, day job, um, I've visited a lot of places in the States, and one place that comes to mind is actually in, um, is in um, Florida, and I was looking for a hotel, and there was absolutely 
no hotel available because it was a very small town. The name of the town escapes my mind right now, but it was one of those towns where there's one motel, and that's pretty much it. And the motel didn't seem too inviting, so I came across this old uh, bed and breakfast, which happened to be a very old historic historical uh, plantation house. And it's one of those things where, you know, you leave work, you think nothing special is going to happen. You're just going to go eat and go to your hotel room, to your holiday inn, and just, you know, be a regular day. And I just remember, like, as soon as I step in that house, feeling, like, inspired, sensing the history. It almost seems like it was decorated, like, like it was, like nothing had changed for, you know, all those years. And they put me on the top floor, and I had access to some, some very small, hard-to-access staircase that led me to a small, um, uh, a small attic, and it was raining pretty hard. So you put all these factors together, and it was a pretty cool place to sit down and just write what I, what was going on in my life. But at the same time, merge that with the story of um, trying to feel what it would be like to be there in those days. So. I'm sure. places are very important to me and, um, you know, um, buildings and imagining what it was like when these places were built or these houses were built. And I think that's one poem that very dear to my heart because, because of the story that is, um, attached to it. Okay. What things do you not like to do musically? What thing I do not like to do? I do not like... I think musicians don't like to be labeled. That's certainly a thing again uh, among musicians. Um, but I understand that labels are necessary. But um, as an example, I'm going to be recording my first album in March, and um, I still don't know what the genre is going to be. I'm bringing in so many people with different influences. The songs are there. You know, the core song have, have all been written. But considering you know, the seven or eight people that will come in and put their touch. Um, I really, I'm really trying to not uh, have a preconceived notion of this is going to be a folk album or this is going to be a rock album or is it going to be acoustic? Is it going to be electric? I'm, I'm pretty sure that until two minutes before we hit the record button, I some song I'm not going to know if it's going to be electric or acoustic. So I don't like the limitations sometimes that uh, we give ourselves that, oh, people know me as a folk artist. I know I can't really plug in the electric guitar today and just go crazy. Sure. Um, I understand that when it's an album, there has to be a concept. You know, it cannot be a, a, a people don't want to hear like a mishmash of a different style. But uh, I think it's possible to have different influences and different so- sounds and keeping a common thread within the album. And that's going to be my focus, to have a thread, but I certainly not like, don't like the idea of, you know, um, I wouldn't like the idea of people expecting what the album is going to be because I myself don't know. Yeah, I hear you. And I can tell you with me personally, we're all within like a certain genre or sphere, like I'm pop rock mixed with 80s rock, but I throw everything at my fans. You know, I've done a hip hop song, jazz, and I think it's important to have a theme like you said, but I think most people nowadays aren't pigeonholed into genre. I think everyone's trying to do a little bit of everything and the lines are blurring is what I feel personally. No, I agree. I could certainly see um, styles are becoming... I wouldn't say a thing of the past, but certainly I can see artists from album to album evolving or or changing. And at the same time, you want to be true to yourself. You know, it wouldn't be because I feel heavy metal one day it would be very weird for me to throw a heavy metal song on there because that's not sure. my thing. But it could be just a little one solo on one song that has a Metallica influence or a punk influence. And that's yeah. how I, that's how I slip these things in there. Right. I'm, uh, sure. I, I wouldn't say that I'm a bluegrass person, but I have a fiddler. So I have the opportunity to throw that in there and same with the rock. I'm not a big rock guy, but I have a guitar player that can, um, you know, 
rock it out so I can, I'm going to be able to infiltrate that on the album. And again, that's what makes it exciting is not knowing what the final product is going to be. Yeah. Okay, I got a wonderful question for you. It's going to piss off somebody in Canada, but if you could get rid of one city in Canada, which one would it be and why? Oh, oh Toronto. Toronto? Uh, <laughs> oh, you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 we're going with that. It's just, I mean, the, it's it's kind of the common theme in Canada, but uh, <laughs> being from being from Montreal, the rivalry is uh, even uh, even bigger if I were to compare it to the States, maybe it would be like Pittsburgh and Philadelphia when it comes to sports and rivalry and you know, politically there's there's always been a big a big uh gap and um uh, it remains uh an eternal um uh, ri- friendly rival. Obviously I love the city, I like going there and I you know, I love the people there, but it's it's a fun, very friendly um, thing to imagine that Toronto one day will lose its almighty power of being number one. <laughs> you know, Toronto is kind of, I'm from Chicago, so we're kind of in the middle of the U.S. too. So I don't know if we're kind of sister cities or something, but um, hopefully you didn't offend anybody in Chicago. <laughs> oh, so yeah. tell me what you, someone. <laughs> yeah. So tell me what you would do if we finish this interview, you step outside and you find a lottery ticket that wins you $100 million, what's the first thing you do? I think certainly a little bit more freedom with this uh, album. I mean, it's, it's, you never want to let money in the way of creation, but uh, certainly having a little bit of money doesn't help. But um, someone uh, very close to me uh, uh, talked to me not too long ago about the importance sometime of having limitations because sometimes when you don't have limitation um you know you can be a bit more lazy oh i have money i can just buy a a guitar player i can just buy time but when money is tight so for the for the music it would be nice but i certainly i certainly enjoy the anxiety of having to deal with uh the small budget that i have so probably the money would probably just be to uh you know yeah just I take a year, just take a couple of year off or yeah. something like that. I've traveled a lot in my youth and all that, and to me, money at uh, this point of my life equals uh, the opportunity to maybe uh, maybe work, but in fields that I enjoy, like maybe uh, wine. I'm a big wine guy, so that would be something I could buy. Maybe a little um, vineyard. Okay, tell me a little bit. I I try to ask every songwriter on the show. I want to educate other songwriters and I want to also let fans know about some of the hurdles that we face. So tell me about one of the biggest scams you fell prey to because I want to spread the word and try to have everybody be on the same page so we can fight fight this together. Sorry, the biggest what? I'm sorry? Scam. The biggest scam. The biggest scam? Scam. Scam, like waste the money, something that People oh, promised sorry. you Spotify playlists and you didn't get you uh, know, any, any scam. There's so many in the music industry. Yes, and actually I came very close to be um, a couple of months ago. I can't say I remember the exact name of the organization, but I'm told that it's something very typical that's out there where promotion company comes to town and you know they make it sound like, oh, we've heard your music, we would like you to come and play and there's going to be maybe some music, some dancers or painting, and it's like a big, a big event. And you can put your music out there. You can just come in, plug and play. Everything is free, blah, 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 blah. But uh, really the expectation is that you're going to sell your own tickets. And if you don't sell any tickets, um, pretty much you're doing this for free. And the, where the scam is, is even if you show up there and you participate – and you do not sell tickets because they're, you're expected to sell a certain amount of tickets. You end up owing them, owing this promotion company uh, money to have participated. And after I was approached, I've asked and then I've looked around and there's quite a few of these companies. And, you know, if, if you can sell, you know, um, you know, hundreds of tickets and make money, that's great. But sometimes when you're an up-and-comer, um, it's selling ticket on your own without the means can be difficult. So I would say when you get approached and it seems like, oh, you know, we've, we've heard you and your music is barely out there and you've you got a question really, um, 
if it's a good deal for you. And like anything else, you make sure you read the fine print before you, you sign yeah. it. And I personally would not recommend anybody. There's so many people like that that want you to sell tickets and they get a cut of them. And I just, I avoid that. I've been burned by that. And I don't think it's worth it. No, I certainly don't think it's worth it either. Yeah. And, I, and of course, you know, if, uh, if you've, if you've never um, had a chance to play at any venue, I'm not saying that it's a bad opportunity for everyone, but when you have musicians to pay and you have, you know, other opportunity you could have pursued, um, it's certainly not uh, something I would recommend because there are people that are saying, oh, it's hard to find venues to play and all that. I, I, I would, I would uh, argue that this is absolutely not true. Um, yeah. There's always venues out there that you know are willing to have musician pay, and if, um, you know, I, I, I believe in hustling, and you know, like anything else, if you have to hustle a little bit, then uh, you know, make sure. the phone calls and go there and introduce yourself. And every time you go to a bar and some, uh, there's a live band playing, you go ask the manager if there's spots available, and and um, you'll find ver- that it's it's not that hard to get out yeah. there. It's not that hard. All right, before we listen to your song, Montreal, tell us where we can find out more information about you and where can the fans purchase your music? Well, right now, like I was saying, the album is uh, set to be released, uh, will be uh, recorded uh, early 2019 and set to be released in um, probably in May of 2019. Um, I have a wonderful website currently under construction, so I would say in the meantime, um, typical platform, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, Eve, Y-V-E-S, and The Talent. Uh, if you just search that on Facebook and uh, Instagram, um, I'll come up right away. And I have a couple of demos on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, Montreal, the song that you're going to hear right now, and also another uh, French uh, demo uh, called Les Sangliers. Thank you, Eve, so much for being on the show. Thank you, Sir uh, It's amazing work you do, and it's fun to have uh, opportunities like that uh, come up for us songwriters. Uh, you're very welcome. So here's Eve's song, Montreal.
thecareershow.com. Your destination for songwriting news, interviews, and community. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Our next guest is Chris Stefanik. He's the host of the podcast Choice Conversations. Since 2013, Chris has been delivering to his audience discussions that dive deep into the various topics of personal development, holistic health, relationships, financial success, parenting, healing and growth, purpose, and meaning. His goal is to help as many people as possible improve in all areas of their life. Welcome to the Songwriter Show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. That's a very fascinating story you have. Tell me a little bit about this podcast. Oh, geez. Well, it's a personal development podcast, like like you said. And for me, it's been a great tool for my own personal development. I actually did a podcast on how you can use podcasting for growth. Uh, I have several friends that are in the personal development podcasting space, and they've all said that you know part of the podcast is very therapeutic for them. It's helped them to grow, for one, like organizing their thoughts about these various topics learning about them so that they can speak intelligently about them, you know, practicing, uh, putting into practice these things they've learned, you know, so that they have some experiences to share and then meeting wonderful people. You know, the listeners that listen to, that, that enjoy personal development podcasts are awesome. It's a great group of people that are into growth and other, other podcasters, authors, you know, I got to meet like so many authors that, were people that were really inspiring to me and, and people that I looked up to that I never would have had that opportunity to engage in these discussions, ask them the questions I had, and form relationships with them in some cases outside of the podcast. I never would have had that opportunity without a podcast. So, sure. yeah, it's been a great tool for growth. And I know that I've helped a lot of people as well because the, you know my listeners will tell me that. So it's really, really gratifying. That's a wonderful feeling at the end of the day to know that. So I read in your bio, you play a new musical instrument called the Linstrument. Tell me about that. What is that exactly? I haven't heard of that. Sure. So the Linstrument, it's it's an expressive MIDI controller. So do you know what a MIDI controller is? Yeah. Okay. I guess I will give a just a sh- short description of what that is for anyone in the audience who might not know. But I mean, a MIDI controller is a device that sends MIDI signals to a computer program. And that program then uses those signals to create music. So often a keyboard will be just, that's the like most common MIDI controller, right? I mean, like 99% of MIDI controllers are probably keyboards sure. where, you know, you press the middle C and it sends the, the signal out to a computer that's middle C, but then the computer, the program could in, interpret that in a, you know, a million different ways. Um, you know, you could have it come out sounding like a piano or come out sounding like a saxophone or, or, or whatnot. And the instrument, it's, an expressive MIDI controller where most MIDI controllers like a keyboard is basically just a series of on off switches where the instrument will allow you to do things like, you know, doing a vibrato like you would on a guitar or a violin or doing, you know, sliding like you would. And it has the ability to, to control other aspects of the sound, the timber of the sound. So you can, have like if you're mimicking a, a saxophone, you can put that growl of the saxophone in there, right? Uh, and, and various other ways you can you can change the sound. So like you could control flange would be one one thing, or, or other effects at, at just your fingertip as you're playing. Instead of having just on or off, you can adjust how much of it with every with every press of your finger. That's so, very cool. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a super awesome instrument. I personally think it's the greatest musical instrument man has ever invented. Second best instrument only to the human voice. But you know, <laughs> we just got lucky yeah. with that one. We don't uh, we didn't invent that one. But as far as the instruments man has invented, oh, it's just so amazing the sounds it can make, and it's so easy to play. Oh my goodness! I mean, I had been playing guitar for like twelve years when I first sat down to play the instrument. And basically, the second I sat down to play, I was better on the instrument than I was on the guitar. Mm. Just because it's, and even though I'd never played this instrument before, it was just so easy to play. Now, I mean, granted, I did have a little bit of an advantage because it is laid out like a guitar. It's in kind of the same, the notes are in the same positions as a guitar. So if you can imagine taking the guitar and laying it in your lap and playing it that way, um, sure. like, like, you, like you would maybe a steel guitar or something like that. 
but it's still a brand new instrument. I don't play a steel guitar. I play the regular one. And it's just, it's, it's way easier to play, which is, of course, a bonus, right? I mean, you don't want your yeah. instrument to be hard. And you can use it with you know, the wonderful software programs that are out there to mimic these other instruments. So I can like mimic a cello and sound amazing, just like sitting down like right away, sound amazing on a cello where, I mean, it would take me years and years of practice to sound is this that good. Similar, is this similar to, a, I remember something called an artiphone, same concept kind of? I'm not familiar with that instrument, so I, I can't okay. say. Um, there are other instruments that, that are expressive MIDI controllers that are um, multi poly, uh, MIDI polyphonic yeah. uh, devices. So like one would be the high, the, uh, let me think if I can remember how to pronounce it, the Hycom Continuum, I believe, something like that. Which is, if you go you know, on YouTube and, and just search for Hycom Continuum and listen to that, I mean, it's, there's some amazing sounds you can make with it. Uh, just like the instrument, I, I did. A, I had a hard time deciding between the two because they're both such phenomenal instruments. But I mean, one of the things that led me to go with the instrument over the the continuum was the fact that the continuum was a lot harder to play, a lot harder to learn than the instrument. Uh, still, not that hard, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Still, probably easier than a piano because it's laid out like it's laid out like a piano, where the instrument's laid out like. A guitar, but still, like I said, still probably easier than a piano. And there's a couple of reasons I would say for that. But, but overall, I, I felt like you know I would be better at what what I wanted to do would be better on the on the instrument based off of feedback from talking to other people and getting a chance to sit down and test it out before I made sure. the purchase. So, do you start? Tell me a little bit about your songwriting process. Do you start with music? Do you do lyrics? Do you do Tell me a little bit about where you start. Right, right. Yeah, usually I start with a melody, and I've several, several of my songs have come to me in my dreams. So I've just learned if I have a song in my in a dream, if I wake up and I've got the song in my head, I immediately I'll like go to my phone because that's usually the quickest thing yeah. I can get, and I just sing the melody. I'll, I'll turn on the recorder on my phone, right, and I'll just sure. sing the melody into my phone, and then go back to bed. <laughs> the next morning, I'm like, "Oh, what did I dream of last night?" You yeah, know, I listened to the recording, but I've had some great songs. Probably my the, the song I'm, I'm uh, most proud of that I wrote is, is 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 one that came to me in a dream. It's just a really good song, and I it's actually not the one we're going to do today because I I wanted to really showcase the instrument on the show today. And this this is probably the song I'm second most proud of. So it's okay, still a pretty good one. What's the name of the other song? Just for our listeners, that when they check out your website. It's called The Gift. The Gift, that's a cool name. Yeah. Okay. How do you come up with the titles to your songs? Do you, are you one of the guy, type of guys that spends like 10 seconds on it? Or do you spend like days thinking about it, you know, using different uh, variations of it till you feel comfortable with it? Probably somewhere in the middle. So like The Gift was one that I sat down and wrote a whole long series of lyrics for that. And when I thought about what was the, what was the key piece what what captured the essence of the song? The gift really, really captured it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, this the song you're going to play today, Daffodil Dance. This one, at the time I was writing it, I was listening to, I was reading, rather, a poem from William Wordsworth called I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. And here, I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I won't read the whole thing. But so it starts off like this. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. And then it you know, goes on and on talking about just the joy it brought him and the experience of just, just this one little vignette, this one little moment of time of him walking around the lake and, and how he was inspired by these daffodils dancing in the wind. And the, he closes it out like this. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Very cool. And, yeah, and, and I was just like, the, the joy that this brought him and from this vignette, um, you know, on the lake, watching the daffodils in the breeze. It reminded me of like this, this song, it's, it's, a, it's joyful for me. I, I find it to be joyful and one of 
more more lighthearted than than a lot of the other stuff that I've written, which would would be um, you know maybe more gritty or or um, somber and, and the like. And sure. and it just it spoke to me. I'm like, hey, this is the dance of the daffodils, and so that's where or I think I call it actually daffodil dance. That's a great title, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's the best songwriting advice you've ever received from someone? The 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 best songwriting advice that I've ever gotten was to just try to relax, you know, and not not stress. If you're trying to stress, it's not going to come out well. But rather, if you need to, you know, meditate and just sit back and and clear your mind. Don't try to think about a melody. Clear your mind. And let your muse sing to you. Let the melody just come to you rather than create it on your own. And then that's that's going to be the way to channel your muse and really get the purest, the most beautiful art to, to get your essence is by clearing your mind. When there's something in your when your mind is your mind is not an artist, you know, it's that muse that's somewhere outside of it that uh, that, that gives you that 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 expression. And if you can get your mind out of the way, then that's where the beauty comes. That's key. And that's, uh, you know, again, at nighttime when you're sleeping, your subconscious is working for answers. And right. we're lucky nowadays because I heard this story, John Mellencamp, when he wrote his hit song, he was showering and he wrote it on the shower with soap, you know, bar of soap. And <laughs> now right. we have iPhones. You know, like you said, you can wake up if you're watching TV and you hear this cool phrase, you just jot it down. And it, it's such an advantage or if a melody pops in your head. You just sing yourself the melody and record it. It's it's almost like cheating. It's so much easier now than it used to be. Yeah, you're right. The technology is. I'm definitely working it in many ways. You know, I've got this little instrument, which is awesome. Uh, I love playing samples, which means you know, there's of course synthetic you know synths out there that you can play that have been around for decades, man-made sounds which are cool to play. I but I I tend to like best the ones that sound more like the traditional instruments where they, they mic them and, sure. and you play it. Now, and that's been around for a long time, but it always it used to in the past sounded terrible and you're probably better off just playing the synths than trying to do a like, poor simile you know, of like what a guitar sounds like or a trumpet or something like that. Now, some of the software out there is amazing where it's like, you close your eyes, you'd be hard-pressed to not know, to know if that was a instrument or a violin, that kind of thing. I mean, it's clarinet, Absolutely. saxophone, whatever. Yeah. It's really cool. So that's cool. The editing software, it's like, you know, I bought this device, this like, this little like mixer, and it came with Pro Tools as part of it as, for like 200 bucks. And the sound on it is amazing. And I'm sitting there like, this is better recording equipment, higher quality recording equipment than the Beatles had to record with. Yeah. And it's, true. it's $200. You know, it's like, yeah. You know, it's like chump change, you know? So, we're, you know, we're just so fortunate. I'm so glad and for so many ways. And like you said, yeah, even for songwriting, the a phone is, is phenomenal. You know, for like you just like you said, you you have it with you any, anywhere you go. And you don't have to be writing on the wall with soap. And especially, you know, for us as indie artists, I mean, you who has a you know hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar budget to make one song? You just right. don't. You don't have that, and you can have a home studio. And again, it might not sound perfectly radio ready, but you can get it pretty darn close as you get more experienced in it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the the quality you can get on your own is just fantastic. And now they've got these things, these devices. Now, I'm not even sure what what they're called. This this category of machine, but like the Ableton Push and like um, the machine from like Native Instruments. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen yeah. these things? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I yeah. mean those for those are just phenomenal for like helping you to 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 write music to or uh, to to record to editing. Um, they can really speed things up and make it more efficient, so you're not sitting there having to point and click all the time. And then performing live with them, you can like create a track in Ableton, right? This this DAW, and then you can DJ it live using the push. Sure. And it's really like you're almost like conducting an orchestra, right? Where like you you wrote the pieces at home, you know, but then you can perform perform it live by with the push by conducting the orchestra. I've I've heard the expression that like a conductor plays the orchestra. You know, the 
the, the orchestra might have within it by people that play the violin or people that play the trumpet, but the the conductor he plays the orchestra. In this way, you get to play your your recording that you made in the same way that a conductor plays the orchestra. It's really really cool. Yeah, Lots and it's only toys. getting better, and it's only going to keep getting better. I mean, I about a year ago I bought. I don't know if you've heard of Isotope because. You know, when you when you try to get something professionally mixed, they have all these cool plugins, and you realize, oh wow, there's a plugin that can diminish breaths. So there's a all these things that would take you like hours to do. It can be done with like a plugin, and it's crazy. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chris, I got a really important question for you. Are you a Marvel or a DC fan? Wow, definitely Marvel. Although DC is 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 working on me because they've got some good stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, but but yeah, Marvel and really liking Deadpool. <laughs> so yeah. Deadpool is awesome. Yeah. Okay, so amazing. what if you could pick one superpower from the Marvel universe, which one would you pick? Oh, I would I would go with Professor X and the ability to read minds. I just, That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just always had that one as 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 one that really appealed to me for better or worse. So That's awesome. So tell me something I don't know in the next minute. What you don't know, probably that the um, you know your subconscious mind that everybody basically everybody has baggage they're carrying around, and it's part of their you know it's it's in their subconscious mind. It's something they absorbed from their childhood as a, survive, as a way to survive. There's these survival strategies we learn as kids that then hold us back when we're adults and it's like 99% of the population pr- probably even more than that is walking around with this and it's kind of like these the, the puppet masters of their life it's pulling the strings on on what they do and if you dive into that heal that those 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 parts of you that were formed in your childhood that were survival mechanisms and bring them into harmony with yourself and with the, the goals that you have going forward there's nothing you can't do. You know, you can really reach success in all those areas of your life. Like I've talked about, um, like I talk about on my podcast choice conversations. It's wonderful. Okay, Chris, where can listeners find more information about you and where can they purchase your music? Right. So the best place to find me is at choiceconversations.com. If you go there, you'll find my podcast. You'll find, um, links to Facebook, links to YouTube, right at the top of the page. My music is all on YouTube. I don't charge anything currently. Um, I'm at some point, you know, going to make some products to sell. And uh, as, as I dive more into the instrument and make more music, I haven't been, I've only been playing it since the spring. And I've got a whole bunch of songs that I've been playing at home and some that I've been, you know, not just not just doing instrumentals like the one we're going to play today, but but somewhere I'm, I've, I've been really enjoying rapping. You know, I'll, I'll solo on the, in, the instrument, rap, solo on the instrument. So that's that's coming, but it's not there yet. But for right now, choiceconversations.com, that's the best place to go. And there you can go listen to my music on YouTube. And um, if you're just wanting the podcast, that people don't really go to websites to listen to podcasts anymore. They they, they go through the, the apps on their phones, right? So that any of the apps that you would normally listen to a podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, you know, just the thousands of generic podcast apps that are out there um, you'll just do a search, a search for choice conversations and you'll find me thanks chris so much for being on the show oh you're welcome it was my pleasure now we're going to listen to chris's song deaf until dance
Thank you so much for checking us out tonight on W4CY Radio. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Songwriter Show, and I hope you decide to spend every Tuesday night with us where you can hear amazing stories of other songwriters and learn a little bit about the industry. Have a wonderful night. Thank you for listening to The Songwriter Show. To keep the momentum going, head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com.